I take one. I like that. I take Well, let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're here, and I know there's still some coming in. I just saw somebody out in the parking lot, so we'll fire it up. We're gonna uh, probably gonna be going with recordings for a while for our music. I'll tell you why a little bit, but let's stand up together and do our call to worship today. This is not from the scripture that I'm teaching from today. This is one we've talked about a lot lately in our Bible study. This is about the return of the Lord. This is something we need to be ready for. And I know on a week like last week when so many people were here, it was incredible. That makes me think about this. The gathering of the saints... Being in the house of the Lord, and he could come at that moment. This is First Thessalonians chapter 4. Alan, did I see that you'd like to read it? Yeah, Please do, sir. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. With, with the, the voice Lord, of the archangel, and, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. 
We can't lose sight of this heaven. If we honestly in our hearts believe what we say we believe, this is what we're looking for. He's coming. He's going to call those folks out there first. Most of us in this room have somebody in that graveyard. We do. And some of y'all nod your heads right now. Say, did you go first? And he'll call us with him. Glory be that day. Let's pray together. Lord, we pray today. This first Sunday after celebrating Easter. That we continue to seek you with our entire hearts. That we come to this house rejoicing. Painting like the deer for the streams of water. Nothing holding us back. But bask in the glory of our Lord. And today we get to be in this house to start our week. Let that be us today. And now as a church family who loves you, Lord, and love each other together, we'll recite the Lord's Prayer as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stay standing our first song we'll do today will be, I believe, yes, an Alan Jackson rendition of Leaning On the Everlasting Arms. Let's sing together. Number 366 in the book, if you'd like to have that hymn on your hand, I know some of you do. That's a good song too right there.
First thing he did when he got home, after having not eaten much for a goodly while, is he ate more than half of a fried bologna sandwich, because you talk about comfort food, there it is. So he is pleased to be home. Almost as much as Cindy's pleased that he's home. Harriet has a clipboard right now that she'll send around. Uh, she has given us permission to help feed them with a dish every other day. Since this only came about yesterday afternoon, we've handled today our family. We won't need a dish tomorrow, but you'll see an X marking out tomorrow, but there's a spot for Tuesday, a spot for Thursday, and so on every other day. Please only sign up for one. Right now, we only have two weeks listed because according to her, according to Cindy, if it gets to be too much, we'll have to back it off a little, you know, because we know that you all know how to feed folks. So if you do sign up, we ask that you call Cindy to see who all is going to be there. They're going to have a lot of people at the house today, so we have a dish to feed those people. It might be that the day you bring food, it'd just be her and John. Ask them about menu, see what John and Cindy would like, and check in with them by phone. We have directories up here. If you don't have a directory with her number in it, get one today, okay? She's expecting calls. I said I'm sure it'll happen. So, have John and Cindy in your prayers every single day. And I know you will. I'm going to open it up now for the rest of you all to, to bring up the prayer needs. Who do we need to focus on all day today? Miss Linda. My cousin Ella Brunker uh, had a house fire this week, lost everything she owns. She has MS. So her daughter is down here from Wisconsin. They're trying to figure out how they can get her back to Wisconsin and into a maybe assisted living. Um, but the greatest prayer need is that she might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, that she would be saved. I've witnessed to her so many times, and, uh, and I've got to talk to her since she'd lost her home. And uh, she's broken right so perhaps now would be the time that she'll accept the Lord. Um, be with Steve. He has his good days. He has his bad. Last night was a bad night. Uh, he had wanted to come today so badly. And uh, I have two tests coming up in the coming weeks, one this week and one in the three weeks. Uh, trying to figure out what's going on with my blood pressure. Keep Stephen Linda in prayer. Can you tell me the name of your friend again? Ella or Ella? Ella Brunker. So E L L A? E L L A. Brunker? Brunker. Like it with Salem? Right. Okay. Thank you. Who else do that, folks? Kate from Calgary. Tell what you told me yesterday. She has made a tremendous turnaround. She was actually out playing basketball yesterday. No crutches, no walkers, no assistance. Scheduled for to be released to come home this Friday. That's not how it sounded. In March 1st was when she first had this begin. So a month and a half and she couldn't move, remember? And it was <laughs> really bad. 14, right? And uh, all around athlete, active kid. And now she's She's doing what she wants to do, play ball. Uh, let's get her home and get her outside and get her feeling good. She's got people praying for lots of churches, including this one, and family, of course. Andrew. I have two. Uh, one is uh, Edgar's grandma made her feel better by going First name you said, Mayor?
stopped the shooter, right? He was part of the group. Well, that did. I guess he drew the fire, you know, because he, he and his partner, his, his actual uh, training partner, rushed the guy so it drew the fire to them. He was shot, his partner was shot, his partner's fine, um, but his partner was the one that actually took the shooter mm -hmm. out and was safe. No telling, no telling, but long watch was the big guy had. So you all know the shooting that happened Monday in Louisville at the bank across the road from Louisville Slugger Field. Um, Patrick's friend and training colleague Nicholas was the one who's in intensive care at the hospital and was part of the takedown of the culprit. So be with this young man in your prayers. I know you have been since last Monday, but this is someone that touches our church family's heart. Um, Fairly local guy, young man, just got, was 10 days in the force, right? Just graduated in March 31st. Yeah. A hero, uh, sacrificial hero, 26 years old. And he's been a firefighter on the Patrick has since they came up together like, you know, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. He's done a good Extended from this, prayers for the families of the victims. Uh, everybody involved down in Louisville with this. It wasn't just one shooting, it ended up being two or three shootings that day and during the week. It's a mess. Uh, there's been another mass shooting, I think it was in Alabama yesterday or today. And it's, people are crazy, and it's the people that are crazy. There's a lot of politics and wanting to blame anything beyond the people. People are hurting. We know the answer, don't we? Amen. The answer is why we're here. Let's share that so that less and less of this happens and lives are changed. Who else do we need to pray for today? Yes, Ms. I need to take one off. Uh, Dana Nethery, I mm -hmm. went and visited her Thursday, and she's doing much, much, much better. Very good. It's always good to graduate someone off. Yes. The prayer list. Our prayer list is getting bigger and tinier font. We gotta hope some of these folks graduate off of it like that. Just one. To take Mason Zaylor off. Um, he broke his leg, but he's doing right. fine. Good. And you all, if you want, um, you can always grab an extra bulletin back there where Troy is and mark them off and just put it in my hand when you leave. A lot of you do it that way if you've got people that we need to update and take off. That's great. Harriet, what did you say? Uh, just, I guess, continue to pray for Jenner. We don't know. Uh, I mean, we know he did better. He had pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And they just flew it off. And, and uh, Coach Jenny said he was doing better after that. So just continue. Yeah, Jitters. Bobby Moore was here last Sunday. And then by Thursday, Wednesday, he was in the hospital. The mm -hmm. But already better immediately after they started giving him treatment. So uh, pray for Jitters. And, um, Illness has been passed around. I know we're talking about uh, Timmy's grandfather there. Uh, Timmy's good friend Brandon, who's been attending every other week when he's off work. He's sick this weekend. He was texting me. He's online. Good. I told him to check in. He said he was going to watch. I said, check in so anywhere. He has, a lot of y'all have that thing where you feel like your entire body is just sore and exhausted. And this is a young man who's 31, so he's really uh, feeling it this weekend. But prayers for Brandon. Uh, that is, Get better. He only gets to come here every other Sunday, and this is the week he's sick. Anybody else online give a prayer to Harry or anything like that? No, we've got calls from the Wheelers online. I'm not saying anything about prayers. No one is online. I read yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just an update for Jeannie. Roche. Roche's online. Good. Yeah. Uh, Jeannie, yeah, we were waiting for a part that helps her stay in her chair. That part was delivered, but now they need another part for a chair. Some kind of hanging involved. So, one step forward, two steps back. Again, Jeannie desperately wants to be with her church family. And uh, it's pretty fired up about it. So, that I don't want Any other prayer needs today we need to bring up? One here that's not, it's listed every week, but it's specific to that. We always have the Emmaus, Chrysalis, and REC community listed because those are ministries that we take part of. The REC, Residence Encounter Christ, goes in the local prisons. And right now you might notice a couple holes in the pews, Barb, Banter, 
and Kathy Walling. They're in prison this weekend. Love saying that. Don't you love hearing it? Barb and Kathy got locked up this weekend. Yeah. But they actually get to come home today. They are working at Luther Bucket Correctional Complex. Casey and I got to see them at the prison yesterday. We were able to go for a short event. And uh, according to both of them, it's going very well. So I know a lot of you in this room have done prison ministry in the past. It's back. After a three year hiatus, it's back. Praise God for that. Uh, the men there at Luther Lucky were so elated to see people there loving on them. Let's go into a time of prayer, a silent prayer, and I'll close this together. Lord, we pray today for those that uh, are not able to be with us. We have several watching online today due to illness or not able to be out. Nicks and deans and just not able to get with us today. Glad we have a recording for that. Be with Brandon Hayden, who's feeling terrible this weekend. For Ella Brunker, who's going through quite a lot right now. But let's hope and pray that she um, can come to a saving faith during this time of trial. For Mary Leachman, Got a lot going on right now with a lot of uh, diagnoses that you can't even pronounce. For Steve and Linda Obiak, both with separate needs going on right now. Prayer for Miss Linda to get some answers to help regulate her blood pressure and Steve to be strengthened up to be able to get to the house of the Lord when he wants to so bad. For Katie's whole house, are coming home. By the time we're here next Sunday, hopefully she's home. And hopefully soon can get back to her church family and be part of that. We know they're praying for her where she worships at Lockport. Prayers for Nicholas Wilt. Friend of Patrick, young hero, um, serving his community as a firefighter as well as now a policeman and helped uh, in the team that stopped the madness at the bank Monday in Louisville. He's paid the price with uh, devastating injuries. Prayers for all the victims of those shootings throughout Louisville and now throughout the country. Prayers for the REC work that's happening. Barb and Kathy are in the middle of it till this afternoon. Prayers for all that are unspoken needs at this time. We pray for those that do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's in his name we do pray. Amen. Now, we have, um, I know, one birthday listed. i get my clicker to work here. There we go. Our celebrations and announcements. And that one birthday guy, unable to be here today. He's supposed to be online? Okay, well, if he's supposed to be online, we're going to sing for him. Casey Jeffries' birthday is Tuesday, the 18th. He's had a fiasco of the week. If you didn't know, he was driving uh, the Indianapolis trip, working up there, and the truck he was using was stolen. It was recovered. The police did a great job, but what a mess. So they're still dealing with the truck issue right now, literally, in Indiana. So we're going to sing happy birthday to KC in a Do we have any other birthdays in the house? I know some of you who don't know your birthdays yet because your visitors are not even members, and we don't have you on the calendar. You might like it that way, but you want to sing to you anyway. Anybody have a birthday this week? All right, we're going to sing happy birthday here, KC, okay? Sing it loud and proud so we can hear it in Indianapolis through that cell phone. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear KC. Happy birthday to you. And many more, and a chop, chop, chop from the sun. I don't see any anniversaries listed on the calendar for this week. Do we have any? Anybody get hitched we didn't know about? <laughs> That's your long enough too? All right. Announcements. Uh, I have a postcard that I will be posting on the bulletin board from Amber Fuchs. So always keep up with those that we are um, hearing from and that we contribute to in our ministries. 
There are uh, ministries that Brennan participates in. This Wednesday, we're having our last Bible study on the last four chapters of John, John 21. Come to that, we get good crowds each week, and we'd love to add some new folks that haven't been there in a while, or ever. We have a potluck meal at 6. You don't have to come to that if you don't want to. The study is usually 6.30 or a little bit after. We do have some that, that just show up for that part. That's okay. You don't want to be tempted by the madness of potluck. I myself love that temptation and uh, get into it each and every, every Wednesday. This coming Saturday, we have two events. One is uh, at 9 a.m. we have men's breakfast at the new Kentucky Ridge Cafe in Campbellsburg. It is across the walkway from the grocery entrance. They're a coffee shop and they have lots of food there too. So it's, you don't have to just go there and get a food food coffee with your pinky out, guys. You can eat. I had, um, they got biscuits and gravy and they got um, bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits, sausage biscuits, good stuff. So good country cooking. 9 a.m. and then 10 a.m. ladies are meeting here to decorate for our Sunday's event, Rache's baby shower. So ladies, anybody that wants to be here for that, I know that that, that we hear that's not going to take too awful long. Some of the ladies may end up beating a little bit. Some of the ladies may, may end up going for lunch. But just come if you want to be part of the day with the ladies. It'll be kind of an impromptu get-together. And then for Rache's shower, Harriet Scott, one last time. Yeah, it didn't come across last week. I think I started over there, and it somehow didn't get over here. And I'm not sure it got all the way to the back either. Yeah, so, and some of you weren't here last week. Yeah, so oh. we'll, we'll move it back again. And also, everything on the list has been signed up, but it doesn't matter. If you can think of something you want to bring to the baby showers food-wise or whatever, you do what you want to do, it's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, there's not a, I don't think she's registered anywhere. But what she says is that uh, if you want any pamper, any kind of type of diapers, unscented, unscented wipes, and then if you want to buy an outfit, that's, that's your choice. Um, and then she has a swing that she wants, and you can just put some money in a card to donate to a cause of a swing. All that simple so to you, right here. Any of that's fine. All right, next Sunday, before that, before worship, we're going to have choir practice. Come attend for that. Ladies, all ladies are invited to stay after worship for the shower. Um, any details you need, see Andrea right here in front. Looking down the line, um, we're going to start having our softball practices hopefully two weeks from today. We really wanted to have one today, but we had some barriers come up, not only with our family, but a lot of our players unavailable today. So we're hoping two weeks from today that we can have a softball practice. Um, also, we'll be showing the Jesus Revolution movie in a week and a half. So if you didn't get to see that when it was in the theaters and made quite a splash, uh, we'll show it here. Lots of good things going on down the line. Just keep on looking there, and uh, we'll keep it up to date. Any other announcements need to be made by anyone else? Besides me, could be great. All right, before we have our fellowship time, yes, ma'am, go ahead. Oh, yes, you do have one, but you're right behind that speaker. I can't see you. And then you're up after that, too. Uh, All right, so uh, looking at planning a fence row for that, we've got a fence row here that's got some shrubs just growing wild. It's got some dead trees in it and stuff. And we're planning on that to be April the 29th. So if anybody can contribute to that, I appreciate it. We may even get a sign-up sheet going maybe next Sunday. I, I don't know if it's at this point. But we can do this. So that will be April the 29th. And uh, the reason for it being the 29th is because we have access to a hydraulic And I said to somebody earlier that older I get, the more uh, I'm enjoying power tools. And not the manual ones, so um, that's the amount. So, Adrian, are you talking about the long boss property in the back? Or what? Yes. Okay, just any of it. We've just got all kinds of work going on there. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be there. And I like doing it early. I don't like snakes, and I don't like any free weather. <laughs> so, if we can get it done in the spring, that would be great. I appreciate it. Yeah. And Miss Linda. Planned. Oh, yes, thank you. Always have to remind me at least three times. Miss Linda has brought some zucchini plants 
in little cups out on the porch and also seeds for pea plants. And they're just free for the taking. They're right outside the door here, literally. Not the fellowship building, but the chapel. Take as you like. Uh, as you do today. And now we have a children's message. Adrian's up for that too. So kids, come on up front here. Love to have you. So the scripture I'm going to share with you today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, it's verses 19 through 21, and it's part of the teachings of Jesus that we know as the Sermon on the Mount. Verse 19 says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves, I'm sorry, verse 20 says, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Verse 21 says, for where your treasure is, your heart, there your heart will be also. So Jesus is giving us two commands in this scripture. The first command that Jesus gives us is do not store up your treasures on earth. And Jesus explains to us why. So um, he explains to us that moths and vermin to steal, destroy our earthly treasures by damaging the materials. And a thief will steal your treasures. When we focus on material items and what we want, our heart becomes attached to earthly things. But when earthly treasures are damaged or stolen, we lose the joy that we had in owning those things. Have you guys ever lost a favorite toy? A favorite toy? Or have you had something that belonged to you that you really thought a lot of? That was important to you. It's dope, or it wore out, or <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know. I don't think they're as good as they used to be. So our joy in earthly treasures does not last forever. Yeah. Um, you may have outgrown something that you thought a lot of. And Jesus also tells us. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. The condition of our heart is revealed by the things we treasure in life and our priorities. When our heart is focused on us, our goal is to get what we want. We all like getting what we want, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. But when our heart is focused on heavenly treasures, our goal is to obey the commands of Jesus and to serve God. The second command that Jesus gives us is to store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Get your family in the church. Grandma said get your family in the church. We've been talking about this in Sunday school. It gives a family church. 
hence leads the thread. Jesus is commanding us to take our focus off of the earthly treasures and focus on storing our treasures in heaven because we'll not be taking our earthly treasures to heaven with us. When we store up our treasures in heaven by sharing the gospel of Jesus with others and telling others about the gift of his salvation, the kingdom of heaven will never be destroyed and will never be stolen. The kingdom of heaven is forever and ever. So, I've got some treasure boxes for you guys. It's what you've been working on in Sunday school. And it's to remind you to store up your treasures in heaven. And our treasures don't have to be big. It can be all the little things that we do and all the the, the good thoughts that we have, the things that we do for people. Thank you. All right, let's have our fellowship time. Go see everybody.
Church, P.O. Box 495, Newcastle, Kentucky, 40050. The stand for doxology. <laughs> John chapter 19, two weeks ago, at the beginning, Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, focused on the crucifixion of Jesus. 
We talked some about his triumphal entry on Palm Sunday, coming into town of Jerusalem, but that changed quickly. That feeling of glory and joy on a Sunday of Jesus arriving and throwing down the palm branches, welcoming him with hosannas didn't last, and by the end of the week he was hanging on a cross. They crucified, we crucified. Last week, Easter Sunday, when we had 132 people in here, now we know what it looks like to be full. Pretty cool. Talked about his resurrection. He came out of the tomb, and they didn't even recognize him at first. Mary Magdalene was wondering where he was. What did they do with him? And then she thought he was the gardener when he walked up until he said, Mary. And she said, Rabbi not. This week, one of my favorite later appearances of Jesus, John chapter 21. You know, we talked about Wednesday night at the end of John chapter 20. There's kind of a wrap-up paragraph where it sounds like the story is complete. And talk about, he did all these wonderful things and many, many more, all so that we could learn about the gospel. But then we have chapter 21. And I'm going to read the first... Uh, 19 verses of that story right now. The picture on the bulletin on the screen captures what's going on. It says, Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, the twin, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, Peter, James, and John, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. Now, I love the way that starts because I can just hear Simon Peter just, they're frustrated. They don't know what's happening even though they were there for the resurrection. They all scattered. They really have a clue still what was going on. He says, I'm going to fish. And that's what he knew. That's who he was. And those with him, about half the disciples said, us too. We're going with. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. That was about right. And they probably realized that. We don't have a clue. We don't remember how to catch a fish. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. <coughs> so the picture on the bulletin, that's this moment. But the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered, and they thought, I'm a wise guy, standing on the shore, ain't got no fish, have you? No. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Big change, big surprise. From nothing to a big number we'll hear in a moment. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon and Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. The same tempestuous, wild as a cat, Simon Peter, who had said, I'm going to fish. He jumped in the water. He couldn't get to Jesus fast enough. The other disciples, yeah, they took the boat. He's a swimmer. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Echoing back, they had a few times where they fed with fish and bread with them. A lot of people. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. And I can imagine their feeling, and I know I felt that way when we used to live at Crystal Lake with Grange. And JR and I would go out fish almost every day. We keep count. 
and we put the number on the calendar in the kitchen. I draw a little ichthus, a little fish symbol, and put the number inside. It was fun when well, you had one of those days and you caught that name. Here, they counted 150 fish. But even with that name, that wasn't 20. This was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Think about what has just happened. They have gone with Jesus multiple times and fed thousands of people of fish and bread. Now he's feeding them back. And now the story I want to focus on is this. I told you in John 18 that Simon Peter denied Jesus three times. It was a rough patch. I can't say I would have done any better. I probably would have done worse. I probably would have hidden behind that fire barrel where he was standing and denying Christ. But he did. And we know he did. So now we're back. Jesus and Peter. When he finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. <coughs> Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because he asked him the third time. Do you love me? He says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Now, before I read the rest, just stop there. Three times. Jesus had told him. Before the cock crow, which you'll deny me three times. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't leave it there? Yeah, Peter denied him three times. Jesus could have moved on, but he comes back. He catches them 153 fish miraculously, feeds them breakfast of it, and then makes a point of forgiving. Peter, three times. You denied me once, I forgive you for that. You denied me twice, I forgive you for that. You denied me three times, I forgive you for that. Feed my sheep. And look how much he trusts Peter. He's going to tell him the rest of his life. I'll pick up at the bottom. He says, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and you went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands. Someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. So with that story, Peter, not only has he been forgiven and been reinstated, He's been told by the Lord, you know how they crucified me? They're going to crucify you too, pal. Follow me. He's essentially telling them, you're going to die because you follow me. You remember what Peter did? Did they crucify him just like this? He wouldn't have it. 
you got to flip me upside down. I cannot be crucified in the way my Lord was. Not worthy to flip me upside down. So here we are. You know I want to relate this to us. It's not just about Simon Peter and Jesus. We deny Christ daily. Maybe not verbally, maybe not the same way that we say, they say, hey, were you with Jesus? No, 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 I was not with Jesus that night. It may not be that way, but in many other ways, and by sins of omission. Have you ever done that before? Have you caused yourself before hiding your faith under a bushel? You know the old, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No, I'm going to let it shine. Have you ever hid that faith under a bushel? You didn't want anybody to know you were a Christian. Or you didn't want to upset the apple cart at the family gathering or at the get-together or at work or at the store because you knew that you saying you were a Christian was going to get you in a heap of trouble. It was going to cause an uproar. Somebody might make fun of you. Somebody might say something you didn't like. You might get instigated to say something that you'd regret. I often tell Harry that I, I, I don't want to be there because I'm going to say something. And I, I'll end up in jail for what I say. That's a great omission instead of fulfilling the great commission. Great commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, tells us that Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all of my commands, he says, as he'll be with us to the very end of the age. Now, how can we do that if we don't talk about Jesus? If we hide it under a bushel? Now, I'm going to ask you personally, each and every one of you in the room, now, if I point at you, I got three fingers pointing back at me, are you going to deny Jesus? By that great omission, by not bringing him up, by not talking about him because it might get awkward just a little. To me, I think it's very little different from what Peter did. Yeah, he verbally denied Jesus, said, no, I don't know him. But if we're at the get-together, if we're at the ball game, or we're at work, or we're at the restaurant, and somebody says, well, what do you think about them Christians? I mean, get real what they're saying. You're like, oh, yeah, right. And you don't say, no, I'm, I'm a Christian. I believe it. I don't believe the world should support the things that we're supporting right now. I believe that we should make a stand with the products we purchase and endorse to send a message that we don't stand for that. We buy something else. I want to give some examples that will chill you about how this great omission can happen even from the pulpit, even inside the church. I've had two different men over the last two weeks that have never met and probably never will, both tell me about megachurch pastors in Louisville that are delivering funny, engaging, positive messages that come across mostly as self-help talks because you can't hardly find the scripture in them whatsoever. How is that any different from being a simple talk show host? If I stand up here and say things to tickle your ears, that's in scripture too, to make you feel good, to make you feel like you're on top of the world and can't do wrong, you can get that on any number of TV shows that have nothing to do with Jesus. And if pastors in big old honking churches, way more than our last week of 132, they would have held a board meeting if they had that view. But they're delivering a 25, 30 minute message that doesn't touch on this more than maybe just skirting along the edge of it. That's going to be the state of Christianity in America. We can't have that. We won't have that here while I'm standing here. And I hope and pray that you don't. And how can you be part of that? 
don't omit your talk of Jesus when you're with other people. You tell them about Jesus, and you tell them why you're telling them about Jesus, and then you live it out in the way that you act, the very anger that you exude to people. You know that our church has been growing. We have tons of people out today. We knew what would be here, and we still have more than we averaged last year. We averaged 55 people last year in 2022. If everybody that is supposed to be here that can't because of work, or sickness or travel, we have over 70 here today, and that's about what we're averaging, because you're getting the word out. You're telling people, and you're not omitting the Jesus part. Keep doing that. They'll keep coming. Not just here, but if the people you tell live closer to a church in LaGrange, or a church in Campbellsburg, or a church in Carrollton, they'll find that one too, and hopefully they'll find one that stands on this, and not just kind of skirts around the edges of it. There's a song Tim Menzies has on his new album. He'll be back this summer. He says, in the lyrics, I don't want to sand off the edges of that old rugged cross. I don't want our church to sand off the edges of that old rugged cross. That cross is rugged. We know that from Holy Week. If we sand off the edges, then we want to polish it up and make it real shiny. There's some things you can polish up and make shiny, and there's still a yeah, I'll let you go in yourself. We're at a time of invitation right now. We're going to sing a hymn, Christ the Rose. This is the last of our Easter hymns. I've spread the Easter hymns around Holy Week, Easter Sunday, and up to now. This is about, he's low in that grave, but up from the grave he arose. Let's sing it together. And if you have something to say at the end of the service about you and God, that's the time on that last verse. Let's stand here. <laughs>
got some little ones in there too. I see one, I just see hands. <laughs> and there's a there's a hand up. Bridget's holding Owen's hand by one finger. So Eric, would you pray for us, please? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to get together in your house and hear your word uh, spoken from the Bible that you provided for us, your own words. Lord, help us to be out this week and, and have the opportunity to spread your love and spread your gospel and, and tell people why we come to church and why we why we decide to put our life in his hands. Be with us this week. Keep us all safe. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.